worked a lot with uh, mainly those whole ye- whole yeast cell models um, and then also prebiotics. And I can't really explain which ones they are because we're trying to publish with some companies. But with some of them, we did see reduction at certain levels. So we tested more of like a dose response kind of, um, especially in broilers, but um, in layers as well. We, we tested at different concentrations and seeing them at different concentrations, you did see some reduction mm-hmm. in the salmonella levels, which was really, really interesting and really exciting as a researcher, you know. Welcome to the Poultry Nutrition Podcast. I'm your host, Pratima, today from Mississippi State University. Um, today we have another guest in our program. She is, she is Dr. Ali Milby Blackledge, who is a recent graduate uh, student from Texas A&M University, Department of Poultry Science. Ali, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. We're very glad to have you um, today. Um, I'm very excited because um, we're going to learn a little bit about your PhD research, which kind of add um, a little bit, adds a little bit on the, the, the feed additive side of it. And uh, maybe something you can share about um, the food safety side of it as well, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So would you like to talk about anything that you feel you know, any groundbreaking thing about your research that you feel like, you know, sometimes like this is very good or you have got a lot of data or anything about you want to bring up to the audience that we, you found a new thing or something like that? So my research, I mainly focused on um, using antibiotic alternatives with laying hens to reduce salmonella. I also did a couple broiler studies, but we were really interested in looking at what is happening immunologically to these birds. So I did a multiplex ELISA where we looked at a profile of cytokines to see how these antibiotic alternatives um, affected the just the immune response to salmonella. So I kind of was able to see that feed additive side, but also use it to apply to see, hey, what's really going on in these birds? So um, we did a lot of work with prebiotics mainly. Um, We used man and oligosaccharides, beta-glucan type type antibiotic alternatives. And then I've also done some vaccine studies as well. Cool. Um, So in your... Um, experience, a resource experience that you did with these different feed additives. And you mentioned about both layers and broilers. I think it's pretty cool because it's very hard to find those kind of dissertation or even pieces combined with different species of the bird. That's that's excellent job, Millie, um, Ali. So, <laughs> so here, what I'm going to ask you, like, what was the kind of, you know, now you can see when like then you have a positive control in the challenge model you're talking about, then you have these additives. So yeah. even though they were maybe, I don't know, they were knocking down the bacteria completely or not, can you share what did you find, like among how many you tested? Um, what were those uh, top three highlighted or even top one or two, if you can share? Like I said, we worked a lot with uh, mainly those whole ye- whole yeast cell models um, and then also prebiotics. And I can't really explain which ones they are because we're trying to publish with some companies. But with some of them, we did see reduction at certain levels. So we tested more of like a dose response kind of, um, especially in broilers, but um, in layers as well. We, we tested at different concentrations and seeing them at different concentrations, you did see some reduction mm-hmm. in the salmonella levels, which was really, really interesting and really exciting as a researcher. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, it's actually working. So um, just to see that. Um, was really cool and just testing different types of products you definitely saw just different levels depleting and different cytokines changing um just with the different products that we use so it was definitely super interesting that's pretty good ellie in fact um my, my phd dissertation was also in salmonella enteritis in lang hands though okay, okay. different interventions so Okay, about the strain of the bacteria, what what different strain or serotypes did you all use in the broilers and layers? So mainly we used um, Salmonella enteritidis, and then I did a preliminary study where we were just looking at um, at how to run this multiplex ELISA, and we used Salmonella typhimurium. So definitely those food, um, those food safety issue 
serotypes that we're thinking about. Um, and mm-hmm. Salmonella enteritidis, you know, we used really high concentrations of it. And so definitely a nasty bug to work with, but to see those levels really deplete to less than the limit of detection was so interesting. And that's over the course of like a week after challenge. So just realizing that these birds, they, you don't really see any clinical signs of infection. It's just, it's, it's really interesting. That's cool. So since you talked a little bit about your immunology and your cytokine side of thing, um, would you tell us um, audience, like what is specific, um, cytokines that you tested was like inflammatory cytokines or any toes uh, like uh, toe like cell receptors or those kind of stuff okay so we had a kit that looked at 12 different cytokines so there was five that were pro-inflammatory we had interferon gamma il2 il6 il16 and il21 and then we also looked at anti-inflammatory or regulatory cytokines interleukin 10 and interferon alpha and then also those chemokines which are your migratory type um, for the migration of cells we had mip1 beta mip3 alpha and rantes which um, is i'm trying to remember exactly which one that is i i can't think of it off the top of my head and then we also looked at a growth factor vascular endothelial growth factor just to see how all of this is progressing like through the course of infection to see hey we're not just looking at pro-inflammatory cytokines we're looking at what is happening to the immune system as a whole it's pretty interesting and very very good research sounds like it so i was kind of also thinking from like a broadly from a kind of a broiler processing side of it, you know, where we have a feed withdrawal and we bring this bird to processing and there's a lot of issue right there with the salmonella. Right. And I'm sure we, we're talking about a different holistic approach where you are adding this in a feed. Right. Then you are there, maybe some control of salmonella. We can have some interbacterial solution in the uh, processing plant with a dipping as a dipping solution or in the chiller or whatever. Yes, yes. Yeah, so these are the different birds, like they're short-term birds, like we're talking about six, seven weeks. Right. And you have a big bird. Mm-hmm. So how in your, and I'm sure there was a lot of challenge for you to even create a model of it, right? Right. So how, yeah, how did you come through? So can you share a little bit of your experience on those challenge models in this different type of bird? Yes. So with broilers, we definitely did a shorter study. We only raised them to about two weeks of age. So we're trying to stop it before they even get to the point of where we're ready to process. We're trying to see, hey, how can we reduce this early on? And then with layers, you know, I raised these birds for 18, 19 weeks um, just until they got into production, just to see how it would affect once they reach sexual maturity. And Let me tell you, layers are a difficult, (laughs) a difficult model to work with. They have a mind of their own um, and they're very, very flighty. So they they were definitely, we we raised them in battery cages just to keep them more comfortable. But um, for sure, it's, it's so interesting to see how the different species took to salmonella and also these antibiotic alternatives. Proven on the farm, trusted on the plate. Let our technologies help make your production goals a reality. Learn from the experts how carbohydrates can improve nutrient utilization, gut health technologies differ by type, and how liquid smoke can light your bird performance on fire. Cary isn't just leading in animal agriculture, we're innovating it. So one, I guess, kind of last question I have here about still with the research, Mm -hmm. um, I'm very curious. Um, So with these feed additives, you mentioned about whole um, uh, east wall cell or whole yeast um, you trying to do and maybe some probiotics, prebiotics there. How much of log reduction were you kind of attempting for or aiming for from these feed additives just to make sure, okay, when we have this in our products like eggs or or meat, um, then they are just good for the public um, safety perspective. Right. Usually we're trying to see if we can get at least a one log reduction. In some cases, we even like to see that half log reduction, just seeing something that's not going to be typical throughout that period of those birds being challenged. But the most exciting is when we see a one log reduction because we're actually seeing that product kind of work. Um, so that's that's kind of what I think. Yeah. Pretty good. So maybe I have like a last but not least question about for you. I don't know how your job search is going on or if you are already done a good job or anything you're settled on, settled in on. Can you share something about your journey? 
I'm interviewing with several companies, but you know, it's, it's a slow process for sure. Um, yeah. The more specified you get, the harder it is to find jobs, but I'm, I'm very hopeful. So we are on the search and we're doing good. So. Hey, I really wish you a very good luck on your job search and I hope you find a new, all the, all the best in your career. Um, okay. Thank you for joining today's episode. There's, if there's anything in the last minute you want to share with your, your audience, go ahead, please. I just want to say thank you for this opportunity. I'm very grateful to even be considered to be on this podcast. And thank you so much. It was so much fun. Thank you, Ellie. I think you are our info. info. So far, I did this program. In my episode, I think you are a second or maybe third student, which were in different phases. Like some people share their PhD research and some were at the wrapping point of their uh, PhD degree. So I really appreciate your time today. Yeah. And I hope we can cross paths and maybe meet you in PSA in a few months. Yes, we'll see you in a few months. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.